Since the public beta launch of iPadOS 26, I did share a roundup of what I think are the best features. And now with the full launch, the public available update now with iPadOS 26, I thought it would be fun to do a refresh of my home and lock screen of my iPad, especially with it feeling like an all new device with a new liquid glass design. The iPad I am using is the newest M3 iPad Air in the 13 inch size. But if you haven't already updated your iPad to iPadOS 26, you can do so in the settings. So now starting with the lock screen, I have it set to this abstract pastel design. If you like this wallpaper, you can download it for free from my website and I will also have it linked in the description below. I decided to go simple with this and kind of let the time take center stage. I like that I can change the look of the time with the new iPadOS 26 iPad OS 26 also brings spatial scenes, which creates this delightful 3D effect. This was a photo we had taken together in Amsterdam a few years ago on whatever full frame camera the photographer was using. So you can actually create spatial scenes from any photo. And I just think it looks really great here with the time. And here is a look at the home screen of my iPad. You'll notice I am not actually using the new clear icons, which you can set by long pressing on your screen, tapping edit and then customize. I do select a little bit of color, but we do get the clear icon look now with the liquid glass design. I did also want to simplify my icons a lot more by creating app shortcuts for them and actually customizing the app icon. I've done this numerous times for things like my digital planners, but I've never actually fully gone in and done that for a majority of the apps that I use on iPad. And I kind of wanted a very specific look this time around for my iPad. So I did create these app icons in Procreate. With creating an app shortcut, you can set a custom icon in text to add to your home screen. So you get this even more customized look or theme for your apps. A lot of people tend to go crazy with this. I want to go a little bit more minimal for this. Again, these are icons I just drew in Procreate and I did not create a shortcut for every app I use on my iPad because that would just be super time consuming and it's really only for aesthetic purposes anyway. The apps I have here in my dock are Settings, Safari, Files, Notion, Photos, Noteful, and Procreate. These are apps that I always want to be accessible from my iPad, so that's why they live here in the dock. These other apps here on my home screen are just apps that I frequently use, regardless of what mode I'm in, and this will make a bit more sense later. But the apps here I have on my home screen are Camera, Calculator, Weather, Edison Mail, which is the mail app that I use, I have an icon here to represent my Notion finances that I created, so kind of a custom app to open up a very specific Notion page. I have the calendar, shortcuts, reminders, Apple Notes, the YouTube app, Discord, GoodNotes, Apple Freeform, and I have Pinterest. I used the app iScreen to get this calendar widget here. It is very customizable, and I actually changed the widget to match the background of my wallpaper. That way it looks like it's actually blending in. These widgets here are my widgets for Notion. This one opening up my content map, which has all of my ideas for YouTube and Instagram, TikTok, and so on. And then this one opens up my product management board, which has a list of the products that I'm working on, the progress and the steps of each of those products, all of my ideas, and just all of that is in that product management dashboard. This center widget is also from iScreen. It shows what I'm listening to and it's pretty fun and immersive with the vinyl record look. It actually does move the arm and spin the record. It's connected to my Apple Music app, so I can pick that up with where I left off with listening to my playlists. This next widget here is actually multiple widgets because it's a smart stack. First, I have this little reminders widget and I use reminders for absolutely everything. I do have a whole dedicated video on maximizing your reminders app and actually Apple Calendar too. But this is just kind of a nice little aesthetic reminders widget that I created. But I do have even more functional widgets behind this reminders one. So I can actually swipe 
to get to the stack, which has my focus switcher. It's just a group of shortcuts that I created to actually switch the focus modes of my iPad. And this changes the home screen and the app setup of each depending on which mode I click. And we'll jump into each of those focus modes in just a bit. But that allows me to have different setups for my iPad depending on the task that I'm using my iPad for. If I swipe again, then we have my setup for all the accessories in my Apple HomeKit app. And this allows me to control the accessories, the lights and things like that, the outlets in my office. And it's a smart stack. If you want to create your own smart stack, just long press on your screen, tap edit, add widget, and then choose smart stack. It will automatically add their recommendations, but you can actually delete these and just add your own. You can also turn off the options to rotate through the widgets automatically and to show recommendations. Going back to the shortcuts here in my smart stack, these set the focus modes I have set for my iPad. So I have one for travel, content creation, entertainment, and home. So if I press set home, it actually turns off all of my focus modes and brings me back to this home screen that you see here. This is kind of the home state of my iPad. If I tap set travel, for instance, you'll see that it actually changes my home screen setup. So I did make a travel oriented home screen, one that shows the widgets of the different time zones, maps, and kind of a bigger widget here of my schedule over the next few days. Then of course, I also added the focus switcher again. That way I can switch back to home or switch into a different focus mode if I need to. The apps I use on my iPad most while I'm traveling is the calendar app, the calculator app, surprisingly, maps, weather, translate, of course. I do also have Tripsy and WhatsApp. Tripsy is a travel planning app that grabs your reservations, flights, and important travel documents, and it organizes it all for me so I'm not jumping between so many different apps to find my booking information, my flight details, and just all of that. Now, if I need some entertainment on the flight or I'm just in the mood to wind down and play a game, I can switch to the entertainment mode by tapping set entertainment. And this is my home screen setup and the apps that I use most when I am in, in entertainment mode. So I have widgets here along the side, one being battery life, that way I can keep track of my iPad, Apple Pencil battery life, or any Bluetooth controllers that I connect to my iPad. I also have my focus switcher again, so that way I can set travel content creation or go back to the home state of my iPad. And then I actually have the Game Center widget, that way I can keep track of games that I've recently played and quickly hop into those again. The apps here that I have on my iPad for entertainment are Disney Plus, HBO Max, we have the Libby app, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, and the Apple Games app, which is new with iPadOS 26. Libby is great though, because it connects to my library card and that allows me to check out books, ebooks, audiobooks, all the things from my local library. So I don't usually mind reading on my iPad, but I can also access Libby through my Kindle. But I like having it here on my iPad too, especially because I don't like bringing so much stuff when I'm traveling. I don't wanna also bring my Kindle and all that stuff. So my iPad can function as a Kindle. So I tend to leave that sometimes and we'll use Libby that way. So that's why it's on my entertainment screen. Of course, we then have the Apple Games app, which serves as kind of like an all-in-one hub for all of your games. So you can keep track of the updates and the achievements that you have for those games all in one place. I haven't played too many games in a while from my iPad because usually after working, I'm in mom mode. So do leave me your recommendations because I'd love to have a different way of kind of winding down each day versus scrolling my phone. And what better way to do it than with an iPad game? The last shortcut I have in my focus switcher is content creation. So if I tap content creation, it brings me again to a new home setup created specifically around creating content from my iPad. I have this huge widget here, I'm sure that you noticed right away. And that is the files app widget. I use the Files app a ton on my iPad. That's primarily how I access and save my content across all of my devices. That way I can quickly jump in to work. I also have the calendar widget, of course, and my focus switcher, which I have across all of my home screen devices, again, to quickly switch between the different modes. And then I have a bigger widget here on the left-hand side, and that's my Notion widget. And that has all of the dashboards and pages and templates that I have favorited in Notion. And that allows me to quickly jump into very specific pages in my Notion. And then I have all of the design related content creation apps 
within folders for this one just because I have more apps and less space for kind of a singular view of each app. So I have a design folder, a colors folder, a video folder, a photo folder, and fonts. So in my design folder, I have it set to just be kind of your main design apps. I have Creative Cloud because I am an Adobe subscriber and use pretty much all of the Adobe products. So I find it worth it for me for right now. I have the Adobe Express app, Illustrator, Fresco. And then I also have Affinity Designer as well as Affinity Publisher and then Canva and Procreate. Use a lot of these when it comes to creating new products for the shop or creating graphics and all of the things. So I like having all of those organized in this design folder. The next folder is for colors and I have three coloring apps that I use for saving and organizing color palettes. So I have Ombre, Pastel, and Coolors. I guess that's how you would pronounce that. Out of these three, the two I use the most are Colors and Ombre. Colors is great for saving and organizing color palettes. And it's also great for getting color palette inspiration because I can just tap and it will show different color palettes. It's really easy. And what I like is that you can actually export these color palettes as a Procreate file. So it makes it really easy to jump back and forth between those two apps. And then I like using Ombre for things like gradients. So I can get uh, gradients and generate different gradients from this app as well. Very similar to colors actually, it's just for gradients. The next folder I have is video, which holds Procreate Dreams and Final Cut Pro. Now Procreate Dreams isn't necessarily video, but out of all of the folders that I have created, it kind of just fits best in this one. It's an animation app that is very drawing based because it is Procreate. Uh, so I have that here in the video folder. And then I have Final Cut Pro. Now I don't edit a lot on my iPad. I actually prefer to edit on my computer. Just find it easier for me. And that's just kind of the workflow that I've adapted over the years. But with Final Cut Pro coming to iPad, I did edit a few YouTube videos and reels and things like that on my iPad. So I do have that still on my iPad. And when I am on the go or I am away from my computer, I still need to crack something out. I like using Final Cut Pro on my iPad. The next folder I have is called Photo. And this is just what you would expect. It's all for photo editing. So I have Pixar, Remini, Photoshop, Photomator, Photoshop Express, Photo2, Affinity Photo really, and then Lightroom. And out of all of the apps here, the one I use the most is obviously Lightroom. There's features of each of these apps that obviously make them a bit different. So I like having all of them available to me, but I primarily use Lightroom for editing my photos. The last folder for my content creation focus mode is the fonts iFont is the app that I use to install and download font profiles on my iPad. That way I can use fonts across all of the different apps that tap into those custom profiles. If you haven't downloaded custom fonts to your iPad before, I do have a tutorial on that that I can link below in the description for you. The next font app is actually for creating fonts yourself. It's called Font Self. And this app makes it stupid easy to create fonts on your iPad. So if you ever wanted to have a font of your own handwriting, which I totally recommend everyone does at least once, you can easily do it with font self. Highly recommend, it is vector-based, so it's very professional in the way that you can create fonts using that app. So that is a look at my iPad setup and four different home screens. It's a much needed refresh with this liquid glass update. And I will say that all of the apps that you have seen across my home screen setups was hardly half of all the apps that I have here actually on my iPad. Additional apps I might use here and there or serve a highly specific purpose, a niche purpose, have actually hidden from all of those home screens. That way I can keep things clean and not clutter my iPad visually with apps that I use but don't access as routinely. Now iPad OS 26 feels crisp, alive, and like the refresh my iPad desperately needed. It was also the perfect excuse I needed to spend the time to set up new focus modes, customize my home screens, and even create the custom icons for my apps. If you liked my iPad customization setup and want to dive a bit further into iPad OS 26 and the new features, be sure to check out my roundup video, and I'll see you over there. Bye!